Right there. Right there. Right there. Six responses. I did not. Whoops. I think you. Do you have to be like signed in to sign up? No. Can I sign up? Right now? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I guess I'll step in line. <laughs> Hey, Alicia, what was the, do you know the brand of this t-shirt? Upper colors. Do you know if that runs big or small? It runs pretty small. I mean, I get large ones, but I like a little bit of it. Is the Titanic one? I'm going to just do it. I'm losing weight, but. I'm not. No. I'm down 35 pounds. Are you really? Yeah, I actually, when we went to the regional meeting, I had my suit. It was too big on me. Really? Mm -hmm. It was like, I wasn't expecting I'd put it on. I'm like, I could pull it out to like here. <laughs> and, yeah, it was like, <coughs> we're good. Uh, Wait, who are we been with? Alicia. She's, her Venmo's on here too. Is it? Yeah, I go for it. I can do Venmo a lot easier. Can we do hats? Jesse? Yes. Nice right. to meet you, yeah, Brian. Nice to see you again, man. Hi. How are you doing? Doing good. How are you? Oh, not too shabby. Just Came rounding out the end of the semester. <laughs> I like the little <laughs> yeah. pen there. Oh, thank you. Nice and fancy. Yeah. Yeah. What's the uh, commencement? Brayden. Yeah, yeah. he's nice president-elect, so oh, okay. if you guys want to come back You're next year, this is who you'll be talking to. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully a little less messy here. It's here. <laughs> That's the look now, basically. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Purposely messy. Yeah, there you go. It works. There you go. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah. It works. So you got a presentation you want to load up here? Yeah, I'll just put a little PowerPoint in here. Okay, cool. Nothing special, that's for sure. But. Oh, it's good to have a little bit of visual. I haven't yet. I will. I'm just trying to get my lips together. Yeah, fair enough.
before the meeting starts, any of you guys that like wanted a t-shirt but haven't filled out your form yet, I have the form right here. We need three people to come up here and fill out a form. Let me get that discount. And this will be even cheaper and it'll be really fun time for everybody. T-shirt, right? Yes. A VAP yes, T-shirt. Yes, you do. They're very spicy. Only eighteen dollars. <laughs> we try. I can be beer money. <laughs> uh, yep. So looks like PowerPoint's all good to go. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just kind of. I'll say yeah. What's your setup? Over some VAP stuff. Okay. But, uh, once we get through all that, I'll go ahead and we'll dismiss for food. We have Applebee's, so help yourself to some as oh, well. Oh, nice. We have a, this is a very big assortment of different kinds of food, so okay. there's a little bit of everything. Variety, okay. Uh, but yeah, and then once everyone's gone through the line, I'll go ahead and you can come up here. And, okay. Um, you will be, uh, we are live streaming our meeting. So oh, nice. We'll be on our live stream. Better be on my best behavior. So. <laughs> Nothing crazy. Yeah, everything you say, <laughs> do. <laughs> it is recorded, so. <laughs> Okay, cool. Cool. All righty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got quite a bit of Yeah, I just signed up today. Hey, uh, the people, who's, who here is going to spruce up USI? Who's yeah, I did, um, but who's who's already signed up for it? Like, I've actually done it online. Did you guys find the see a section where it said to like say what group you're with? Yeah, at the bottom, it says leave any comments or no. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. So when I, I did it, I could not find that. Yeah, it should have been at the very, very bottom somewhere. Okay. Cool. Well, for some reason, you guys don't see it either. For some reason, there's also an option that says like, are you doing it with someone? And you can just put my name. You're going to say that? No. I'm assuming like the old person. Yeah, something. I don't it know. It notes last year. It yeah. Notes last year. Yeah, I remember last year. It did I not say, are you doing something? Or anything like that? No, like it literally had like yeah. attendance, yeah. and then you would associate yourself with someone else, yeah. and you could see the attendance list and like who's coming with you. Okay, I must have done mine too early. Yeah, I don't know. It's, but as long as we all get to go, that's what's important. Travel reimbursement forms that we'll need to get going on here fairly soon too, just to reimburse for like per diem um, and then like the parking tickets. Yeah, our food costs. That's your registration fee. Yeah. Austin said the same thing right after I texted it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, so I don't know if that process has changed, you know, because all the other processes have changed. Um, so we'll need to look and see. But if it's like it was before still, there's a specific travel reimbursement form. It's, it's very similar to a direct pay form where you just, like, put what expenses need to be reimbursed. And you'll just put the per diem for $32 a day on Friday, 32 on Saturday. Breakfast and lunch, uh, so 16 on Sunday and 16 on Thursday. No, because you get 16 for dinner. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we have a total of like $96. So, and there's that. And then also your parking ticket and my parking ticket. We need to have that attached as well. Um, I'll send it to you, and you'll need to get a copy of your bank statement and just black, black out your information, like your like account routing numbers or whatever. Uh, yeah, and then just show that. Because it was like, how much was that? I can't remember. Was it? Yeah. Mine was like 36. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, no one knows differently. Should we all take a vote that we just split up raises per diem amongst all of us? Yeah. 
get started guys so this is our last professional meeting other than the initiation so it's coming to a close it's been fun uh, we got a bit of stuff to go over today uh, before we get to food and get to the presentation first off spruce update has changed so that's now on Sunday April 14th I think all of you guys would have received an email about that as well but I want to go ahead and put it out here in case you know you don't check your email um, and then, yeah, register there. And as I was saying just a second ago, if you do not see a spot to add like a comment and say that I'm with BAP or something like that, um, alternative, which is it'll say, are you going with someone else? And you can put my name. So one of those two routes should get you good. Next up. Uh, so some events coming up. So we have a couple IMA events. One is IMA is hosting a student night at Buffalo Wild Wings on April 22nd. So that's from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, that's the one here on the west side. And there's going to be free B-dubs, uh, you know, prizes, networking. Uh, they're going to make a big event out of it. So we should all go. It should be a really good time. Um, I think they're working to get a lot of professionals. It'll be a good networking opportunity. And if anything else, just get free. Buffalo Wings, can't beat that. Um, and then as what's been on the calendar for a while now, we have the Holly's House Tour, which is uh, April 24th, but we're still not quite sure on time yet, so. All right, so finishing out the rest of this semester as far as BAP goes. So we've got initiation on April 18th at 4.30 p.m. Uh, DOZ will be there speaking at that as well. Uh, so I think likely what will happen is we'll run the initiation, like we'll go ahead and initiate all our new members, and then we'll have DOZ come and speak. Um, along with that, uh, we need tracking forms. Like, so I sent an email out a while ago um, with a tracking form. Those are due April 11th. And that essentially is just logging your hours that you've done this semester, um, along with just filling out different information. Uh, so yeah, so be sure to get that in by April 11th, because especially if you're an uh, uh, initiate this semester, you've got to get that in, that way you can get initiated. Uh, so then, so that same night, right after initiation meeting, we'll go straight into Meet the Firms. So that's going to be at 6 p.m. in the Griffin Center. Um, officers, I would like us to go over there just a little bit early so we can kind of be sure everything's set up right, um, you know, be sure all the table markers are good. Um, and then with that, too, so part of Meet the Firms is all the companies that do come to Meet the Firms will get a binder of all the resumes of our members. Uh, so that being said, start tweaking your guys' resumes, and I will need those no later than April 16th, so I can print those out and make binders. Um, you know, actually, let's change that to, if you can, get it in by April 11th, preferably, just because of the officer meeting, we'll put together the binders. So, so April 11th, as far as getting those resumes in. Um, if for some reason you don't get it in that time or need to do it later, you know, I can make an exception, but preferably April 11th. And then there's also a list of companies that we have confirmed going to meet the firm. So we have SSNC, Harding Schmansky, Barry Global, BKD, Ryan Hancock. And then I was going to ask you about DOZ. I mean, they're going to be here anyway yeah. for the I meeting. Know, I forgot the email that exactly. Okay. So, yeah, if they want to get like a half table, like, is it, are, That's what do. Yeah. are they sending two people down for the. No, I think it's just one, and then they're hoping that me or Nicole will stay with them. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean, that can work. Um, you know, or if you want to, you know, run around. E even like a half table is meant for one to two people. So, 
if they only have one, that's not a big deal because they'll still be with another company at that half table. How many companies do we have last year? I think we had five last year. Really? Yeah. It just seemed like there's a decent amount of tables to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, we saw a little bit of rumor still, but... Yeah. Uh, so I'm still waiting to hear back. Does anyone here have a contact for Vectron? Because Susan Hardwick, the person that I was contacting, is her email is not working for some reason. I don't know if any of you guys have a contact for that. If not, I'm still waiting to hear back from quite a few other places too. So we'll wait and see. So that list could grow. Um, but yeah, so that's how it is right now. Usually they like to like email me last second and be like, yeah, I know it's like tomorrow, but can I go ahead and get a table? <laughs> And I'm like, why not? The more the merrier. So, yep. And there's a nice flyer summarizing all of that data as well. Let's go to the next. So BAP shirts. I know we talked about this a little bit, but the money for that is due today. Um, so that's $18 cash to Alicia over here. You can say hi. And then, or if you don't have cash on you, you can Venmo her. Because um, what we're going to do is she's just going to purchase all the shirts and then distribute them back out to us. And as you can see, they look really, really good too. So I can't wait to get some, get some blocks. Is that the, that's the appropriate? No, letters, yeah. blocks. Blocks. Yeah. That's okay. That's appropriate. They're like. Nice. All right. Very nice. Very comfy. Very fancy. I like it. Cool. Good. And then, so here, uh, something new that the Remain College of Business is doing. And so Tori Taylor and I are on it currently because it, well, it just started like two days ago. Uh, but it's the Romaine College Business Student Advisory Board. And what that is, is essentially it's a board that um, works to improve the College of Business as a whole. So different matters are discussed like, do we need to get new furniture here? Do we need to put in, you know, the charging station? You know, um, is, should the course schedule itself be adjusted a little bit? It would be easier for members. So it's, you know, it's top level, that kind of stuff. So it's really cool. Um, with that being said, so it just started, and we're pretty much just on it right now, so we can select the committee for it for next year. So that being said, if you're interested in doing that, um, I think we're only talking about meeting once a semester, if I remember, twice a semester, so twice a semester. Okay, so I mean, pretty low commitment overall. I think more than anything, it's more just going to be coming up with ideas and then feeding those ideas to the right people to make it happen. So it's low commitment, will look great on your resume. Um, only like 10 people will be chosen to actually serve on the board itself. So, um, and since it is very new, I definitely get on that. And uh, there is a QR code there for that, along with the URL on how to get to that form. It's just like all the other Google Forms I've sent out to you guys, so you can fill that out and upload your resume to that, and, and then yeah. Then we'll choose who gets to go on that on April 24th. And then lastly, just wanted to quickly highlight the BAP regional meeting. So we had a great time. We went, we did chapter operations presentation and a best practices presentation. Uh, it was a really good time. I think we all had a good time. I think I can, you know, all of you would agree with me that I hate the helium sticks. Those were terrible. <laughs> we, so. We had this thing, right, where it's like, is, is this mixer? And they're like, okay, so here's a, you have this long metal pole. Like, I mean, it's probably like 10 feet long. And they're like, okay, so let's take 14 people around this stick. Let's all, you have to hold it, touch it with your fingers like this. And all you got to do is lower it between your knee, you know, down like below your knees. Um, but your fingers can't separate from the, the pole or else you have to reset. Well, that's impossible. <laughs> as easy as it sounds, there's no way that's happening. So, and if anything, I think it just pit us all against each other. So, we were just blaming one dude at the end the whole time. Some guy named Matt. But, um, but yeah. <laughs> no, not, not, not this Matt. This Matt did fine. Didn't you guys get it? Yeah. As you can see, I mean, I mean, there was like, what? I think eight groups total. So, 20% success ratio. It's not the best. It is. Welcome. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it was a good time. And then the annual meetings in Chicago of next year. And one thing I didn't put up here is we're going to be having uh, elections. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. So um, elections, that's going to happen at the initiation meeting. And it's going to be electing the positions for next year. Um, on the tracking form that you guys fill out, there is a spot that asks if you're interested in an officer position. 
Um, if you indicate that you are interested in one of those positions, if you're the only person running, then obviously you'll get the position. But if you're running against someone else, what will happen is we'll have you come up and give like a 30 second pitch, just you know, like a hi, I'm so and so. I would do that. I would be good at this because I'm good at stuff. You know, easy enough. So, uh, but yeah. So with that, some of the big roles that are opening up is we have Braden will be moving into my position since I'm graduating, and then the president elect spot will be open. So, and with that, the treasurer elect spot will also be open as well because Jake is moving into Nick's position. And if you choose to sign up for one of the elect positions, it is a two-year term. So you have to, you know, don't don't sign up for an elect position if you're planning on graduating next May. Okay, so because you have to commit to the full two years. So, but uh, those positions are great because it gets you a chance to go to these meetings and these trips, which are super duper fun. And the one this summer uh, for the annual meeting is in Chicago, so which I think would be pretty fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you guys are interested in that, you know, like I said, just fill it out in the form. If you guys have any questions about specific roles or you know what's required or time commitments or anything like that, feel free to email me. Uh, overall, everything's it's fairly simple. You know, I'd say everything everything's manageable. Um, but yeah, and then yeah, let's go ahead and get these sign-up sheets around. And on that note, we'll go ahead and dismiss for food. Unless you guys have anything else, we good. Good, good. All right, cool. All righty. you'd have is you'd have people standing on the third floor dropping the basketballs down to the first floor trying to make it in. <laughs> but that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah we should have kept it. Same thing. I did the Are you talking thing. about the test? I'm yeah, like, she yeah. said she had like seven. Eh. I had seven that I was like, there were a couple that I was like, it was, there was one about the pyramid scheme and the Ponzi scheme, and I was like, that was but Ponzi. I, I was like, I think it's Ponzi because why would you put pyramid if it's not? And I was like, mm -hmm. this is like a square and a rectangle thing. <laughs> like a There's Ponzi a scheme, a Ponzi scheme is a pyramid scheme, but not all pyramid schemes are Ponzi schemes. And I was like, 
Even though you can do a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, this should be going around. Oh, good to have you back. I know. Dude, I swear I was. It was bad. It was. I did not. Oh, you did not? No. It was bad. Like. It's so unfortunate. They had me doing respiratory therapy and all kinds of stuff. Like, it was. It's pretty well pneumonia um, or bronchitis. Just not taking care of it in the first place. How about we're leaving for some reason? <laughs> Just a little reason. Just a little reason. Jesse, do you guys have a clicker? No. No? No, unfortunately not. I can stand there. Huh? I can stand there. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> the Vanna White. <laughs> All right, how's everybody doing tonight? Good. Good? Excellent. Anybody going to listen to PAL later? That's a pretty big deal. I won't be attending, but it's pretty cool. Pretty good, so I'd be hosting that. Uh, First off, my name is Bryce Bullock. 
for those of you that don't know me, there's one person here that's going to be working for me, basically, in a couple months, Taylor. Um, but Bryce Bullock, and I'm the risk officer for First Bank, and that is headquartered in Carmi, Illinois. Is there anybody from Carmi in here? No? Everybody know where that's at? Okay, so it's about an hour west, right over the river or whatnot. Uh, and I started there a couple years ago. So real quick before I jump into that, I'm always interested when I hear speakers on presentations or webinars or whatnot. I'm always wondering, like, what, you know, what the heck is this guy's background? Where is he from? What's he all about? So I just wanted to throw in this information real quick for you guys so you can get a better sense of where I come from. Geographically, I went to high school at Bar Reef. So that's about an hour north um, in between Washington, Indiana, and Ligoti. Has anybody ever heard of that high school? Okay, so I'm a big alum of Bar Reef, and when I graduated there, I only, there was only 35 kids in my class. So that's pretty big. Um, after Bar Reef, I came here to USI, and I majored in finance and minored in marketing. And I graduated in 08, so I'm an alum here. And then after I graduated in 08, I actually moved to Nashville for two years and worked for Dell in their finance and marketing area. Kind of got burnt out with the whole corporate scene, especially of that size. And it wasn't really the focus I wanted to go into for long term. So I was like, you know what? I actually came back to USI and got my accounting as a, an additional major and to get the 150 to sit for the CPA. So after I traveled back up here to Evansville from Nashville, um, I sat down for the CPA real quick before I jump ahead. Um, this summer, another cool thing is that, I don't know if anybody here has aspirations of going to grad school after your undergrad or whatnot, but this summer I'll start out at the University of Colorado out in Boulder, and that'll be a completely like banking profession school that they have out there. So that's going to be pretty cool and something I'm looking forward to. Um, and also, a little tidbit, I am a uh, made off of member from the past. So I was definitely out here in these shoes one time. Um, professional certifications that I have right now. Uh, the CPA, like I mentioned, I got my 150 and sat for the CPA. Also, I'm considered a certified Bank Secrecy Act and anti-money laundering professional and also a certified community bank compliance officer. So I don't know if all of you or very many of you know much about the banking industry, but it's red tape everywhere. Regulations, regulations, regulations. Because if you think about it, besides your health, most people in life think money is the second most important thing. Um, Post-college career path. So that's kind of a little interesting. Not traditional path back, but how I mentioned it. Start out at Dell got burnt out there, came to BKD. That's where, once I got the CPA, started working at BKD for roughly five to six years. And after BKD, First Bank plucked me out of the water and said, hey, we have an opening. Our uh, ex previous CFO, what she would be considered, is actually leaving due to family reasons. Um, her husband was gonna move up north and she was gonna go with him. To, he was starting, a, I think, a medical practice with so they came out and they said, hey, we have this new role that we're starting, and we need somebody that has a good financial background and also would love to kind of mold into a risk um, manager as well. So that's what brought me to First Bank and my risk officer title. To give you a real quick info about First Bank, I told you they're in Carmi. They're actually 126 years young. Um, when you think about the current environment in banking, there are mergers and acquisitions going around everywhere that you turn and look. Um, I don't know if anybody read in the news a month or two ago, it was PNC Bank, I believe it was SunTrust as well, and they merged over on the East Coast and the Carolinas and like Georgia and whatnot to form, I think, the sixth largest bank in America. And that was a huge change because now you have all these other big players like here in our own backyard, Old National Bank, people of that size, maybe even Journal of America, you don't know. Now all these boards and these upper management, and they're all talking about, man, you know, is community banking really a thing of the past? And we just all need to merge and 
basically form these super regional banks of what they're considered. So what you're going to probably start seeing as you guys mature and start your careers and go off and do whatever you want, the number of banks, they're all radically, the trend line is going down. Hard telling what it'll be in the next 15 years. So to be a true community bank that's independent is almost a rarity anymore. Uh, the asset size, the first bank is 420 million. And so in the banking world, how big you are all depends on your asset size. So for a normal community bank that is considered a small community bank, it's about 750 million assets and below. So as you can see, First Bank definitely falls within that bucket. And just to give you a comparison, like German American, they're at 3.9 billion, and Old National is about 20 billion in assets. So we're quite a bit larger than what we are. Um, another cool fact, actually two weeks ago, in our shareholders meeting, the existing president, Al Fritchley, he'd been the president there for 30 years, he actually gave up the reins as the president and moved up to just being the CEO and the chair of the board. And our previous COO, Nikki Rozier, who is an alumni of USI as well, um, she is now our new president. So that's a pretty cool fact. And in the banking world, I know it's kind of historically thought of as a stuffy gentleman only up at the top. But now it's pretty cool across the industry that women are finally getting the chance to be the big dogs and help run the operations of um, these banks that, if you think about it, a bank is truly the bloodline of the community. Not only for you guys here, or your parents, your grandparents, your parents, employers, whatever, the school, they had to get this money from somewhere to be able to build it and to fund it. Um, so that's a little quick you know, info about First Bank. Now let's get into my role at First Bank. So risk officer. As I mentioned earlier, I do have a background in accounting, and I'm a CPA, and all that good stuff, and how my grandpa always says that I'm just a glorified bean counter, but I don't know if anybody else has ever heard that before. I'm sure you have. Um, of course, he just chuckles when he says that, hopefully. He thinks it's a joke. But, so, risk officer, nowadays, how many in here are wanting to go be a CPA, or eventually look into being a CFO? in that nature, okay. The landscape is changing for individuals that want to be CFOs. Now the board and CEOs, they're looking for somebody who, A, not only understands numbers, balance sheets, income statements, statements of cash flow, da 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 They also want them to be able to analyze it, come up with new ideas of how can the company improve not only just by financially, but actually operationally as well. So you might, I don't know if you're going to go into manufacturing, financial services, healthcare, you name it. But a CFO nowadays and in the future is going to be asked to do a heck of a lot more than just prepare financials and be able to report those to the board or whatnot. So keep that in mind. And I don't know who all in here are not seniors. So there's, um, have all of you had an internship? Looking to have an internship this summer, possibly? Okay, excellent. I can't stress how invaluable an internship is. One, it gets you out there in the real you know, business world to see how it truly interacts on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not what you see on TV or whatnot. You might go into an internship thinking, man, this could be awesome. I'm gonna love it. And then get in there, and then you're like, this isn't all what I thought it was going to be. It's kind of boring. But that is one beauty about internship. One, it can help you realize what you truly do like. Or two, it can help you realize what maybe you don't want to pursue in the future. And that's perfectly okay. That's what they're for. And also, hopefully, your internship, you'll get paid too. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, let's see here. So CFO responsibilities, let's just jump into that. Oh, and another thing, honestly, if anyone has any questions during this brief little uh, presentation here, feel free to just shoot from the hip. Um, I'm very open and, as you can tell, informal. So, yes. As a, like a hiring, like somebody who does hiring, if, some, if you have an applicant whose internships don't necessarily align with like banking, mm -hmm. what, is, what is your perspective on that? 
So it's always a plus, obviously, if they have experience within the industry. But honestly, banking is so unique that it can almost, it's kind of a melting pot. Um, for somebody who has the right skills, meaning that you can communicate well, you're good at managing time, projects, anything like that, you're going to get looked at. It's not just going to be what's on paper. Also, you know, be open in the interviews or whatnot. Be your true self because it quickly shows up once you get hired or whatnot how you truly act, and then they're like, hmm, that person was quite a bit different when we talked to them. Maybe they're just a good salesman or whatnot. So it's not always what's on paper and maybe what your true background is that correlates over to success in a different industry. Um, I'm trying, so our HR, probably the next person that's going to be over HR eventually, she worked for Enterprise. She sold cars, whatnot, over in St. Louis. And she hit a rough patch to where she's like, you know, I don't really want to do this anymore. So she moved back around home and an opportunity opened up for that HR position. So she came in there and interviewed and all went well. And now, I mean, she's awesome. Everybody loves her around the company, whatnot. And that's just another example how you don't necessarily have to have the perfect background to get a good job or a good career going forward. Um, anybody else have any other questions? Okay, uh, moving on here to one function or one tier of my job is CFO responsibilities. And kind of the normal information there at the top. So on a monthly basis, I have a account manager and an accountant that are under me. And you know, they do a majority of the prep work and whatnot. And then on a monthly basis, all perform the review of the monthly financials, make sure everything jives, we're all good to go, um, we're not missing on any new type of regulations that came out or accounting standards, you name it. And do you guys have an accounting research class or anything like that here to use the codification? Sort of. We have our intermediate tier goes into the do you? codification, yeah. Mm -hmm. That is one very valuable skill to have is know how to research. And know when, if you're unable to find the answer you're looking for on whatever topic within a manageable time period, then move on and then come back to it later instead of just spinning your wheels. Um, so yeah, on a monthly basis, I review the monthly financials, make everything's good to, good to go, cross the T's, dot the I's, and then present that to the board of directors. Also, quarterly, banks have to complete what are called call reports. So if you think about it from a public company perspective, they have to fill out 10 Qs that go quarterly so that way shareholders can see you know, how these companies are performing. Well, with banks, because I mean, you're handling people's money, they want to know, the government basically said a while ago that hey, all banks need to be able to make their financials public. So every quarter, every bank completes what are called call reports and they upload those to the FDIC. And so anybody in here can go to the FDIC website and search for call reports, and you can then search for any bank within the U.S. and pull up their call report and see very detailed information. So that's another big thing within the banking industry um, that happens at quarter ends. Uh, internal controls. So financial reporting, internal controls. I help out the team and the bank with identification, development, and monitoring of internal controls. I say, in my opinion, knowing internal controls and what they do, why they're in place, and who can perform what is very valuable to you if you're definitely an accounting major once you start getting into the uh, work environment. Because it's very easy for even upper management to get their wires crossed and get foggy about what we can and cannot do. And they will rely on you to know this information and to be able to communicate it in a layman's term way, pretty much. So internal audit class, everybody in here that's an accounting major, is that a requirement? Um, I just want to open that it's required. Is it? Okay, good. 
I remember I had a, who's the, who's the professor now? Oh, okay. It was Elon. I had Elon when I was here. He was a character. Yeah. Um, another item here underneath the CFO responsibilities, strategic visions, kind of how I mentioned earlier. The environment now out there is CEOs are expecting their CFOs to not only be able to know financials, but also be able to help out strategically and help analyze which direction does a company want to go, how much to invest in certain assets, how much to invest in personnel, you name it, marketing, whatever, new products, services, da da da. Um, so that's another cool aspect of my uh, position. I get to help out the board and the CEO and president relative to any type of plans coming up in the near future or five-year plans, you name it. Um, it's a pretty good aspect. Cash management risk assessments. What this is for our small business clients, um, when they are in need or looking for some more advice on their internal controls relative to their cash manage management processes, meaning like how they receive their bank statements, reconcile their bank statements, how do they handle their internet banking, their internal controls around who does petty cash, da 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 da, you name it. Because small businesses, there was a stat I read the other day where small, the growth in employment uh, has been in small business almost like four to one compared to corporations. So you, you see all these corporations are huge, but when you actually look at the numbers, small businesses are what, what is driving this economy right now. Uh, so these cash management risk assessments, I'd basically send the uh, CEO or the owner of these companies these questionnaires and that it talks about going through step by step like cash management, like I mentioned earlier, cash management, internet banking, um, reconciliations, you name it. And then they'll fill it out with their accountants, get it back to me. Then I actually meet with uh, the relationship managers within our banks because these businesses have an individual at our bank dedicated to them to where if they have any issues banking wise or just within their own company on, hey, what do you think about we start a new business over here in Kentucky or something like that? Like, what would that affect? Um, so the relationship manager manager will get with them and then we'll fill out this, like a 15 page risk assessment and then complete it. But it's, it's, what's really cool is that for a community bank, it's neat when you see these business owners who are looked at as being, you know, pretty well known in their communities coming to you for advice and on what to look out for and what are some red flags to keep in mind. Um, another second tier of my position at First Bank is ERM responsibility, so the enterprise risk management aspect. And this is something, just enterprise risk management in itself is almost like a whole new animal that's just picking up steam in the corporate world. Um, obviously, since the market went down in 08 and whatnot, a huge factor in that were poor internal controls and bad risk management. So what COSO, the Committee of Sponsoring Organizations, I believe that's what it's called, they're basically like this group of 10 people up on this ivory tower who comes up with the standards that basically every industry need to try to follow relative to internal controls and risk management and how to keep your company safe and out of the crosshairs of any future defaults or failures like we experienced back in 08. Um, so, sorry, get off tangent there. So, within enterprise risk management responsibilities, so I have the accounting department and then here comes in to play the compliance department and the Bank Secrecy Act, and the anti-money laundering, and the internal audit department, which Taylor will be in. Um, so the compliance department, what that, when you guys have checking accounts, deposit accounts, whatever at the uh, bank, the compliance department is the main area to make sure that the bank is doing everything that they are supposed to do by a regulatory standard in your benefit. So that can deal with making sure you get notices in time, if for some reason a privacy policy has changed, if you're coming in for a mortgage loan, there's certain uh, 
notifications, they have to be mailed out with certain time frames, like within 15 days of your application being received. All sorts of different things. So that's one of the departments that I have oversight over. And then the BSA, AML. So this is kind of juicy. I mean, this is when you start to see every day, every check, every deposit, every mobile deposit, every uh, cash out, every monetary transaction, I mean cashier's checks, whatever, all come through the banking system. And out there, the government has set up this huge monitoring, tracking platform to where it pulls information from every bank, puts it all in basically this huge egg, and then it bounces around and makes sure, hey, this person just deposited money here, $10,000 but they also just deposited money, $20,000 over here yesterday out in California, but they've done it today in, Ca in uh, Carmi. How the heck did that happen? And then, so there's a good chance that could be money laundering or there could be an account takeover going on. And what an account takeover is, say if you have online banking or mobile banking right now, and somehow your information got compromised out in the internet somewhere from your email or somebody got hacked, social security, who knows. What a fraudster can do is simply just take your information, gain access in a very easy way to your online account, and then just funnel the money out. It's pretty simple. It's pretty crazy out there actually right now. Um, then the internal audit department. So what you have here, does there, anybody know the three lines of defense? They teach that in audit class. So you have your first line of defense is your operational management. So in a bank, that would be your tellers and your retail banking managers and your loan officers and your uh, yeah, loan officers and personnel for loans. And then your second level of defense would be your compliance department and your BSA. And then the third line of defense is your internal audit. Um, to add on here, some other risk management areas that I have to uh, look over are asset liability management. And what that means is basically, so assets for a bank are loans. And then liabilities, the big one for a bank, are deposits. And that's your money. So basically you're just lending the bank to use your money to help fund improvements or enhancements within your community. Big picture, that's what a bank does. Um, so at, with asset liability management, we have on one side, we're trying to keep everybody's money safe because that's our fiduciary duty. But then on the flip side, we are a for-profit business. So we need to try to you know make some money as well. So what asset liability management is, takes multiple factors of what's going on with the market, how does that affect our current customers? Is there a chance that if the market's going down, certain industries are in flux? So does that mean loans are probably higher chance of default? So then do we need to hedge that with certain investments? And then on the liability side, if the market starts going down, then it's more than likely people are gonna start pulling their money out of the bank and have a run on deposits. So then where are we gonna get funding to help fund new loans? And so then you have to look for third party funding, meaning like the Fed. Um, so there's multiple different aspects of asset liability management, basically to help improve net interest income or net income for most companies. Um, so that way at the end, it make, keeps your shareholders and your board happy, big picture. Another area, information security. This is huge right now. Anybody in here? Uh, you have a computer information minor, right? No, major. Major, too? Yep. Is anybody else in computer science? High demand. You guys are in high demand right now. Um, Cybersecurity is just blowing up. I mean, it just comes easier every day for people to get into company emails and through networks, finding weak spots and firewalls, you name it. Honestly, the biggest risk right now, you always hear about cybersecurity and it's all technical, technical, technical. 
the easiest way for a froster to get into a company is through people, just doing an email, or even just calling and being an imposter to be somebody else. It's crazy how gullible people can be and how easy we let our guards down because maybe you could have a fraudster acting in a way that kind of pulls at somebody's heartstrings of the military. Like they'll say, hey, I'm a veteran, and it's completely false, and it's horrible that people would do this. But they can call in and say they're a veteran or send an email saying, hey, I need you to click on this link or something to help donate to wounded veterans of America or whatnot. Once you click on that link, boom, you're pretty much done. That fraudster is able to get into a bank network or whatever company it is, get right into their network. Now maybe that company has secondary roadblocks set up on firewalls or, um, what is it, the other one? Brute force, like brute force attacks and that kind of stuff. Um, so no matter, I don't know, I'm trying to think, even if you're not like an IT person, I would highly recommend you read up on this stuff and just be in the know because it will affect you somehow, some way, sometime. It's out there and it's going to be knocking on your door some eventually in your life. Um, tabletop security, so we have cybersecurity, that's more of the IT related stuff. Tabletop security, what that means, basically physical hard paper. So somebody could print information off of a customer. Because if you think about it, loan applications have your address, your name, your social, your income, where you work, da 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 da. And if people are printing this information off and maybe just plopping it on their desk for the night and heading out, and then our cleaning service comes in, and I mean, you think about it, maybe this, the person had a bad day and they're coming in to clean your stuff and they're like, oh, you know, what the heck's that? Oh, cool. So this Johnny John Doe's little social here, and see where he works, and oh my God, there's his uh, checking account number too. Why not just jot that down on a piece of paper? Right there, you go. You can probably open up a new credit card, do whatever, and that person is pretty much going to be screwed. So tabletop security, that all deals with making sure people are even closing down their computers correctly at night making sure any type of non-public information that was on their desk during the work day is put up, locked away in a drawer, or thrown in a shredder. Um, and then we have disaster recovery and business continuity. So these two things are another big ticket item right now out there. Uh, disaster recovery, that's basically helping out the bank on determining, okay, if a tornado comes, or if, something ca if a building catches on fire, What's going to be the recovery plan? Where are we going to put people? Where's our resources? Like how long is it going to take IT to get a, a hot site going? Da, 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 da. So that kind of stuff deals with disaster recovery and business continuity. Um, and then another real important piece is customer education. I mean, it's nice to have all this info in your head, but what's it really do if you can't help your customer base and spread the love on uh, security and how to prevent them being fools or even being duped by fraud? And then, last but not least, vendor management. Do you guys talk about vendor management much in your uh, computer science? Like in terms of? So, in terms of, so for a bank, obviously we can't do all the data processing and all the transactions that happen on a daily basis. So there are multiple third parties that we lean on to perform vital functions. Well, in vendor management, we have to be very diligent that these other third parties that we utilize have secure networks and get what are called um, SSAE 18s or SOC reports performed. And what those reports are, are basically audit reports for IT companies that reflects and speaks to that their internal controls are properly in place and that management is following them. Because if you think about it from a bank perspective, um, Taylor say, you know, you have your account at First Bank, you have all this information about yourself and it's, it's non-public information, right? Well, if we're relying on these other companies to perform all of these 
procedures and performing your transactions right, you want to wire money, da 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 da. There's a lot of data just going over these cables out in the out in the air. And we have to be pretty sure that these other companies are safeguarding all of our clients' customer information. Because if not, at the end of the day, some guy who's working at this third party company, again kind of going back to the cleaner, but say they're having a bad day and they put their guard down on a simple task that they normally do routinely, and somehow a hacker gets in. Well, not only are all of our clients, but probably all these other companies that use their services or their cloud to store all their data are gonna be compromised. And what, at the end of the day, what happens? Those companies, meaning like the bank, are gonna be the ones looking like the bad guy. So, vendor management is definitely another big ticket. Almost anything nowadays, IT-wise, is huge. Security, that's the number one thing. If anybody's looking or going into IT, YouTube mainly, you have that in your back up in your back pocket. There's going to be a lot of options out there for you to go and look at. Um, any questions right now? Or yeah. Have you guys brought any like consultants in to like test your security? Oh yeah, we do it annually. Oh okay, that's cool. Yeah, well, there's a company out of. Well, let's see. There's one guy. He flies in. They're both. They're a team, and they're called BankSec for Bank Security. Um, one guy flies in from Florida. The other guy flies in from Texas, I think. And then there's a third member. Last year, the third member was from Oregon, I believe. But yeah, they come in and try to perform any test. I think they normally have 30 procedures that they try to perform. They, they change them up each year because if you keep doing the same ones, I mean, what are you really going to solve? So yeah, they do brute force and IP manipulation and website spoofing, and they try to um, pull some tricks on some of our employees too to see if they fail and follow the proper procedures. Um, but yeah, so we definitely have one of those. Any other questions? Any of these topics? Everybody still awake? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, last but not least, any questions at all? It doesn't even have to be bank related or anything, just in general, like work related. Yeah. So when you decided to go into First Bank, why did you, did you believe BKB is more important different? Is it different than the state side? So, not exactly a banker, but. Right, right. So at BKD, I, when I was there, I mainly focused on auditing and consulting work. And I worked in different industries, healthcare, manufacturing, and financial institutions. Um, my main bulk of work was in financial institutions. So, and it was always intriguing to me, just kind of how the banking system worked and just the ins and outs of it that a lot of people don't realize that goes on within those walls of a bank. And you just saying normally it's just a huge vault. Here's money, we take it back out, whatever. But there's a lot more that goes on behind closed doors. Um, so I already did have a pretty good interest in the industry. And then an opportunity like this that popped up for this new position that the bank was creating, I just couldn't pass up. So, yeah. Yeah. What would you say your weekly hours are as a CFO? Honestly, it's pretty remarkable.